Transport Minister Fikile Mbalula has appealed to disgruntled truck drivers to be patient when demonstrating their concerns, saying government is engaging with stakeholders in the logistics industry. Motorists experienced major traffic backlogs on parts of the N3 in KwaZulu-Natal and the N12 in the northwest this week due to truck drivers protesting over the employment of foreign nationals in the sector. Both roads have been reopened to traffic. Should anybody not abide with the resolution and the decisions we have agreed upon, then there will be a justifiable act for anyone who blocked the road to be dealt with, because that equals to economic sabotage. So it does not mean that we have closed our ears and we have not been talking to the, tra tra to the, to the trucking industry. Even at the point the strike was announced, we were in the bottle from the 15th of December, when I thought that we have an agreement, and I said to Deben when Gavin, who was part of the traffic industry, when we went to meet with the Deben chamber, said that there is an agreement that very soon, in the next two weeks, we are going to be announcing. When we are in the process of finalizing that, then the truckers took to the streets and blocked the roads. And they said to me, Minister, the constituency we represent says that there's been meetings after meetings. Now, how are you going to get an agreement without a meeting? So we need to engage and find a solution on this matter. Department of Labor must come to the party. And uh, that's where we are. On Sunday, 19 June 2022, the Ministry of Transport, together with the respective role players in the task team, we are expecting to bring finality to this agreement. Well, let's get the latest on this now with the Deputy Director General for the Department of Labor, Teming Korsi Kalipi. Good evening to you and thank you for joining us tonight. I just want to quickly start uh, with that tail end of the quote uh, by the Minister there saying Labor must come to the party. What do you think he meant by that? Well, I mean, Department of Employment and Labor, as you know, that has published regulations and has published also a, a bill that will regulate uh, the employment of uh, foreign workers in the country. Now, the, Natsika, the process of making law in this country must be followed to its end. I'm sure the minister meant that we need to finalize that process. But then that proper process, as, as I indicated, the bill was published, we've received public comment, now we are going to start with the net -like negotiations and discussion on those comments and then submit the bill in parliament and take the parliamentary process. Why democracy? We've got to follow, follow all those processes that are needed in making up a law. We can't just make up a law without having published it for public comments, discuss it at net -like, and then send it to parliament. And I'm sure that's what the minister meant. Yeah. I mean, you recognize the need, right, tonight to transcend business as usual in trying to resolve issues like this because it is costing the economy millions, specifically the economy of KwaZulu-Natal. Is there a geared strategy that you have to deal with this and to deal with, you know, those who are resisting attempts to deal with this bureaucratically? Well, I mean, the first thing is that we need to accept and know that blocking, blocking the roads is breaking the law. Anybody that breaks the law the uh, institutions that are responsible for that need to do their job and get them off the road. That's the first thing that we need to all agree on. There's no excuse for anybody. The processes that we involve in must take their course. Now, if we are going to be moving at the pace that the truck drivers want to move on these issues, not apply our mind, not do what we need to do, somebody's going to take us to court. It is going to make it more difficult even for them when it's a court that says you have not followed your processes. Therefore, we don't have a choice in this. We've got to follow the rule of law. Now, the people that are blocking the road, any road that you block, it's a contravention of a law. We expect the institution, the police and the traffic officers to do what they needed to do about that. Those it sounds, two are two different issues. It sounds like you're saying they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is that we see truck drivers blocking the roads. And maybe the police will be in a better position and the traffic officer to speak on that. For our side, our responsibility is to look at the policy, how it affects labor law on these issues. And that we are doing, as I've said, we've published a bill, 
We have discussion. We are going to have discussion at NETLAC. Then from there, we're going to go to parliament with the bill. And I'm not in a position now to say what the bill would say. Let's wait until we finalize that process. But you can't have a process that is push. Uh, people saying that you analyze the process even if you do not follow all the legal steps that you need to follow because that will take us back. Right. And, and the sense that we get, you know, judging by the fact that a task team has been put together, is that this can only be resolved through a collective effort. And even if you won't say it, I mean, clearly what you are saying is that police are not doing their part to make sure that collectively this issue can at least be arrested um, and then be resolved. Um, I want to move on to the comment that the minister made uh, in his statement earlier that the latest blockage must be treated as sabotage and a staged crime. Do we know any more from your vantage point who's behind this and what their motive is? Well, I'm, I'm not in the position. I don't know. I mean, it's a police that investigates these kind of issues. We agree with the minister. That's why I'm saying that people who are blocking the roads are breaking the law. We agree with the minister. If the police in their investigation believe that this is sabotage, then they must bring the necessary cases forward and charge those people who are doing this, including those drivers who are parking their cars, not only the organizers. It's got to be the people who are doing it and the organizer themselves. But remember, I'm not a police officer. I'm not experienced in investigation in what charge you bring forward in these cases. But what I know, this is breaking the law. On that note, we leave it there. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, we appreciate it. That was the Deputy Director General for the Department of Labor, Teming Korsi Mkalipi. Well, Nigel Ward, the President of the DCC. Nigel, good evening and welcome. Um, we had initially heard uh, that there were arrests um, in relation to, to these events, um, and I, I wanted to get your reaction to that. Is Nigel, good evening. I'm not sure if you caught, uh, if you caught my question. Uh, we understand that there were arrests and uh, there have been some developments in the way this, uh, this action to shut down the entry has been handled. What is your reaction? Yeah, look, I think that the arrests are, are positive. Um, you know, our, our reaction is that it shouldn't have happened in the first place. We already uh, recognise the economic sabotage that the province is under at the moment. And if we're very honest, it's been dragging on now for the last 18 months, it's still un largely unresolved. And uh, I, I think our, our biggest concern is the perceptions that this is causing uh, to, to investors in the province. Do you believe, and I, I was just talking to the deputy DG in the Department of Labor, who's, you know, essentially talking about perforations in this collective effort to get to the bottom of this and to stop it. But do you believe that the task team assigned to get to the bottom of this and to deal with it effectively is working? Uh, you know, I'd like to say it's working, but obviously taking too, too long. As I said, we've been trying to deal with this for 18 months, but I think it needs a collective uh, effort from all parties uh, resolved to find... Uh, try and find middle ground where there's an agreement one way or the other. Uh, and, you know, it, I'm, when I say all parties, including the, the, the uh, transport and logistics companies as well, because they've got a role to play in this as well in terms of the people that they employ and the credentials that they have to work in this country. So there have been some concerns that have been recorded on the table since the very beginning of events like these, uh, which ostensibly are being dealt with. But let's talk then about the economic impact to a province like KZN. The N3 corridor is an important economic route for the province. What is the impact of actions like this in the short and long term? Yeah, I think we have to answer that off the back of, you know, this is the third punch in the last two years that the province has had. The same as the rest of the, of the country, the hard lockdown in 2020, the, the uh, unrest in 21, which largely impacted KZN, and now this ongoing uh, blockades uh, on the main N3 corridor. What will happen is that, you know, it, it, many of, 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 of the South African uh, businesses are using the N3 corridor, but not just South African. Durban is the gateway, or the Durban port is a gateway to sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, people that want to trade in the, this region are going to look at other options. And that would be really, really... Uh, negative for the province as we're trying to make an economic recovery. And I think for us, that's the big concern. But as I said earlier, the perceptions that this type of negativity creates around future investment and retaining investment in the province.
Have you started to see that? I mean, as you recorded, um, you know, the incidents now are encroaching on two years of these types of events happening, which are hugely disruptive, economically detrimental to um, the province. Uh, ha have there been indications that people are saying, listen, we're thinking twice, we're not going to invest here anymore or we might move elsewhere already? Well, look, you know, the role of the chamber is to try and create that confidence. But if we're very honest right now, there's a strong commitment from the private sector to drive the economy, but there needs to be business confidence. Uh, you know, we've just come through the floods in April of this year again in the province. And, you know, some of the indications were that there was lack of infrastructure maintenance and that. You know, the ease of doing business in the province is becoming more and more challenging, and that makes people uneasy when they need to start looking at the midterm investments. And then when we have blockades like this, it just creates those negative perceptions when we can ill afford it. So, so what do you do in the interim? Because you're, you're waiting for the, you know, the bureaucrats, you're waiting for the task team, you're waiting for the police to do their work, and hopefully something like this doesn't happen again uh, imminently. Uh, what recourse do you have as the Durban Chamber of Commerce? What are businesses saying to you? Um, is there a way to try and find an alternative route, figuratively speaking, um, out of the situation? Yeah, look, the role of the Chamber is really to do advocacy work for, on behalf of our membership and really be that conduit between the, the private sector membership towards the, the national government, the provincial government, and any other entity that is involved in this to say, Let's try and find a solution so that it's an ease of doing, doing business. And really the role as a chamber is we want to be that conduit that creates that economic growth and is that voice piece for businesses in the province. Uh, just, just a quick one, Nigel, before I, I let you go. You know, if something like this happens again imminently, what is the likely impact to business in, in the province? No, no, it's, it's going to be significant, really. And I keep talking about the perceptions but the investors are going to question whether they want to be in the province. And it's not just the investors in the province. It's those people in, in, in the Gauteng province, Limpopo province, that are using the N3 corridor as a means of distributing their, 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 their goods to and from the port. And, uh, and, that, and that extends into the SADC region as well. So we can ill afford it. It cannot be allowed to happen again. And I really appeal to all parties, let's try and find a win-win solution and let's work together. Nigel Ward, thank you for your time this evening, the president there of the Durban Chamber of Commerce.